about a book? A little, oh, yeah, a little book, book out there. There's not and a lot of books that we snuck into History of Awesome, sadly. I mean, there's too many awesome games and movies, but... But this one is big. It's uh, Neuromancer by William Gibson. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it probably the seminal work of the cyberpunk genre. Yeah, I think so. I, I, think I mean, it kicked it into high gear. Really. It did. It, it really did. It, it kicked it off the ground. Well, it did what... It was pure entertainment uh, and then took it a step beyond. It's, it's a wonderful, uh, enjoyable novel. It's just a good read. But it's also full of interesting existential ideas and are not presented particularly pretentiously. You know, <laughs> right. it, it's like, you know, your brain can be a computer. What's uh, incredible about Neuromancer when you read it today is then you're like, wait, what year did this come out? Yeah. Like it was so far ahead of its time. It would have been impressive for this movie to have come out in 94, let alone 84. You know, yeah. ideas of book. cyberspace where it's not technically the first time that term appeared, but you know, mm -hmm. it, it popularized the term cyberspace. Yep. Um, you know, the concept of sort of an AI and consciousness being uploaded into a computer. Um, yep. It's like hackers in general, like a high-level hacker in a, like a much more developed system. In 1984, yeah. like that's yeah. so early for ideas like that to really be fleshed out in a novel. It's sort of like the Matrix for grown-ups. It's, it's the Matrix with a soul. It's like, what if we follow this idea to its logical end? Is dystopia going to be something that we don't notice that just kind of grows around us and suddenly the world's awful and we're like, how did it get here? Yes. Uh, yes, yes probably, it is. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and that's, that's how it's Neuromancer happening. presents it's the universe. Now. And questions about things that's like, not awesome. what's, what, is your, <laughs> what is your mind? What is your soul? What does the future hold for us? When a machine does learn to think and it's going to happen, what does that mean? Is it alive? Are we alive? You know, and that, that, that's, it, those sound like awfully pretentious questions for a philosophy book. Instead, he wraps it up in a heist novel. And right. that's what makes it so readable. About a, so like a drug-addled hacker, yeah. which is like a good, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, it, that's the conceit, and I think it does a lot of good things. You know, he said, um, he, he said multiple times that he took uh, inspiration from Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. and he was actually concerned because like a third of the way through his book, Blade Runner came out. Yeah. And he was like, oh, people are going to think I'm a hack, that I'm mm -hmm. just stealing stuff. Yeah. And I think it, it doesn't do that, right? Yeah. It sets itself no. apart from that world and, and presents a different dystopia. So, yeah, very, it's, very it's cool. Kierkegaard meets Ronan. It's just wonderful. Right. Uh, Great book.